Okay, so um, I saw some fairy houses at a boutique. I wanted to make some fairy houses, so I just decided how to do it, and this is how I do it. I thought these uh, lotus pods, empty lotus pods that you can get in the floral section of a craft store looked like fun little rooftops, and so I just needed to build a base of it. So I just got some plain craft wood that you can get from the craft store, and I marked up about how far it would be to do one side. And then I cut it with my Dremel. Because I am um, impatient, I get it cut about halfway through and then I just break it off. And then once I have these all on, I will glue them to my roof and then we'll paint them to look like cobblestone. Okay, so uh, when I put on my first piece of the house, I start with the widest part of the lotus pod first just so I can make sure that I've got enough room for all my pieces because I haven't marked them or anything. And then I add more glue on the front and the back, kind of like a, I don't know, um, like you do with caulk to kind of help it stay in place. And the next piece, I'm gonna do the bottom and the side, and I'm gonna be painting this, so I don't really care um, how neat or whatever it is. And because it's supposed to be like, you know, a fairy magical thing, I don't think it needs to be straight. But you wanna try and make sure there's not a lot of overhang on the lotus pod, because I did that on my first house and I didn't like the way it looked. And try not to glue your fingers to anything. I'm really good at that one. And we'll add our last piece. And then we'll let it, we'll let the glue set up and harden. And if you'll notice from the top, it doesn't exactly make a square. It's kind of open. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to add doors. So I found these little tags that I already had, and I thought they were pretty cute for little doors. So then I got um, these little hinges you can get from the craft store. They come like four in a package. And usually I use the little screws that come along with them to put them together. But uh, for this project, I just hot glue them on because it's just going to be a stationary object. Um, and every time I do these, I have to remind myself which way the hinges go. You want the hinges on the inside of the wall and the inside of the tag. And then the little pokey out part of the hinge, <laughs> the back side of the hinge is going to be on the inside. So it needs to look like this first. And you're just going to hot glue it because this, this wood is too thin to get the screw. The little screw would just go right through the wood and just hot glue it on the edge of the door somewhere in the middle. And then add hot glue to that side and get it somewhere in the middle. At this point, I like to test it, make sure it'll actually close. And now you've got a working little door that can open and shut. And once again, they're not perfect, they're not straight, but it's okay because it's supposed to be kind of crafty looking. It's a little fairy house. Once you've got them on there and you've got the doors on, the doors will be slightly ajar if they don't fit together, but that's okay. It gives it more of that rounded feel. You're going to take um, light brown, dark brown, white, gray, any colors that you think you might find like in natural stone. And I just want you to slop it on there. Don't get it in lines because eventually we're going to paint this to look like stone. So you want to do it kind of like you would do for a plaster look. Just kind of glop it on there. The one thing you do want to make sure you do is to cover up the wood color. And you can paint on your... Um, hot glue lines, totally fine. And if you um, leave like big globs, that's fine too. In fact, preferable. It'll take a little bit while longer to dry, 
but it'll make our cobblestone look look really good. Okay. So once we've got it all dry, we want to use an ultra fine tint, uh, ultra fine point sharpie, and we're gonna draw cobblestones on there. So just draw some irregular shapes. Um, I think like bricks, they need to not lay perfectly on top of each other. And you're going to find out when they look more, most like stones is when you color in the recessed spots, the blank spots. And then once I've done that, I like to make little dots on them. So like more like granite or something, I don't know. When you're done, it's going to look like that, like that. And then for the doors, I wanted them to look like wood slats. So I just draw a plank line that's just going to mark off. Oops, that's going to be a knot in the wood hmm. where that plank ends and the next one begins. And then I'm going to take a um, flat brush, get some of my dark brown from earlier on it, get some of it off. And then just drag it so it looks like brain marks. Try to drag it within your plank lines. And then try to get a little bit more um, on the sides and on the bottom where it would normally weather. And then sometimes I take that same brush and I I hit some rough spots on the on the wood. Just kind of give it some kind of definition, I don't know, shading. Okay. So, when it's done, it will look like this one that I already made. You can see my little wood doors. And you do want to paint the inside. So if they want to open it. And then that's what the cobbled stone. You know, look at this part. The cobbled stone looks like. And then I just added like a little jewelry thing. And then we're going to make the little fairy. Okay. For the fairies, I took a regular clothespin. And I took my Dremel and I cut it off short so that it's about that big and then to make dresses I just took a flower and I cut apart all the petals and I just hot glue them on to where like a collar would be and if it's not quite as long as I want it to be I'll just take another layer and I'll hot glue it underneath and this is cute because it had one section of the petal was a little bit lighter than the other. So she kind of looks like a little cabbage. So now that she's got a little dress on, guessing this is probably where I'm going to have my front be. So I found these little um, butterfly wings at the dollar store and I just cut off the gem. Not always that easy. And then I cut off the antenna and the things that are on the back that hold it together or that are supposed to wind it around whatever you wanted it to hold on to. Oh, I guess I got to put her hair on first. I forgot about that. So I found this doll hair and I'm not an expert at putting on doll hair. So what I did is I just get a glob of it and let's see, I decided that was my front. I just put hot glue along where the hairline would be and I just stick it into the glob of hair. And then I take out my take out my scissors and give her a little haircut. Now she's got little curly hairs. And I'll put a little hat on her. So I either take a smaller um, flower and I'll glue it like that. Or I'll pull the whole thing out. 
no, if I can. And I'll glue it on top of her head like that. So she has a little... Sorry. <laughs> Am I making it dizzy? Like that. So she has like a little hairband. I think she's going to have just a little... Just to kind of cover up where maybe I don't have enough hair on her head. Glue that to her hair. And then I'll put some glue on my in the middle of the butterfly. Figure out where I want her to sit on it and just press her into it. Hold her there for a second. If the little things aren't staying, the little wires, I'll just pull them all the way out. We don't need those. Fix her little hair. Cut it off if it gets rowdy. <laughs> Here's our little finished fairy. And she can go anywhere for the fairy garden. There's other little things you can make, like the little toadstool stools are made out of um, wooden drawer pools that you can get out of the wood section. The little... Shepherd's Crooks are just made from baling wire that's curved into that shape. They have these little corks in a scrapbooking section or sometimes in the jewelry section that you can fill with glitter and it looks like little pixie dust lanterns. Um, you can add, I added a little fake bird and some jewelry charms that I just had lying around. I added those and moss and rocks and any other kind of thing to kind of make your fairy garden be personalized. That's it. This is the end of the video, folks.